Hey, uh, welcome back. Uh, yes, Shri Kumar, please feel free to ask your question. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, I just want to know the grace, what you said. Is this grace, this special grace, as you are saying? So is that grace is upon the church or um, uh, or any uh, particular individuals? How uh, how the Paul is uh, referring about this grace? Yes, yes, that's a very, very good question, Sri Kumar. So I would say uh, that this special grace is available to both individuals and the church, right? Now, to the Corinthian church, he's talking to them about the individuals. And he's, he's telling as, as individuals, God, God has given you a special grace, right? That is to be there in this place, uh, to be a minister of God, to be a light where there is darkness. Uh, but I believe that God also grants special graces to the church community as a whole right now when we look at history and we look at uh, things that have happened in history and also we look now right uh, there are places where we see God's special grace and it's required right now let's look at this example you start a church in Bangalore we don't need a special grace right uh, I hope everyone uh, agrees with me on that in a city right where there is no persecution and there's no uh, nobody's going to stop you from starting a church right? start a church even maybe probably in other countries as well africa maybe there there are certain towns and cities where where there's no problem you can start but probably there are places where you know it's very difficult to start a church and even if a church is started only by god's grace will that church continue I, for example, Heidi Baker starts her, her ministry. She goes to Mozambique in Africa. It was not an easy task. She needed the special grace of God, both upon her life and on the church. And, and so there are many instances like this. Like, for example, if, uh, there are churches in Iran, in Iraq, in Pakistan. Uh, these are Muslim dominated uh, nations. Oh, they need the grace of God. They need a special grace uh, to keep going. So, yes, Sri Kumar, to answer your question, uh, the special grace of God is given both to individuals and to the church as a community. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Uh, please provide details on general grace. So, Christopher asks about general grace. Now, what is gen what is grace as a whole? The word grace means unmerited favor right and of course it's a it's a big word that are it's wrapped up in uh, with many many uh, you know meanings let me just pull that up here uh, you know divine favor empowering virtues gifts uh, these are all this, that's the word grace right so unmerited favor when we accept the Lord Jesus as our personal savior, at that moment, we become a child of God. That is general grace. God is not going to ask, okay, are you going to start a church? Are you going to uh, you know, follow me? Are you going to start, you know, bring 100 people to Christ? It's not by works. It's unmerited, right? So, you know, I'm sure when we accepted Christ, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit didn't tell us you have to do this, this, this. Uh, only then you will get the grace. No, it's unmerited. It's divine, unmerited grace. Right? Everyone receives it once we accept the Lord Jesus. Right? Uh, and here's an interesting thing also. It, with this divine grace, general grace, there are also divine gifts. Right, so uh, when God gives us the, His grace, by grace we are saved, and it's not by our own doing. He pours out His grace on the grace gifts upon us. Meaning, now for example, um, let me think of something. Okay, so for example, somebody knows how to play an instrument, right? Uh, 
so god gives a grace for that person to you know improve in that skill that gift and gives him the grace to you know use that gift for the body of christ could be even preaching maybe somebody is just you know he likes to talk he likes to preach he never really got an opportunity or he's fearful uh, that gift god begins to pour out grace upon us so he gives us the grace to function in these gifts that you know uh, the skills and the gifts that we are naturally inborn with right so christopher general grace is the grace that we have all been saved it's unmerited right we come to christ not by any works but by the grace of god but that's what general grace is every one of us will receive that general grace and i hope that answers your question Yes, thank you, uh, Pastor. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Uh, any other questions? Uh, we can continue from verse 5. Stop there. Right. Okay. Let's continue from verse 5. Now, uh, here's what I want to encourage each one of us, right? We did the whole uh, history, the background, right? So let that always be at the back of your mind. Let that picture be there, right? Probably you can picture. You know, Paul, a team of five, six people. Picture the the you know the place that they are in, the people, the temples, the church, small little church. So you, when you have this picture, you know it it really helps you to understand, uh, you know, the gospel. It helps you to you know, grasp things very easily. Right. So uh, use your imagination. Uh, I always tell everyone. Use your imagination. Picture what you're studying. Picture it in your mind. When you pa paint that picture, it's going to stay with us for a longer time, right? So, verse five: that you were enriched in everything by Him, in all utterance and all knowledge. Here's the blessing. Paul recognizes that the church is enriched by Jesus, right? Uh, uh, all riches, spiritual riches, material riches, everything comes from Jesus Christ because it's God's grace on their lives. Now, it was so easy for Paul to say, you know, uh, all that you have got, I mean, you, you, you got to know Jesus because of me. And now you're living this holy life because I chose to come to Corinth. It is easy for Paul to say that, right? He doesn't say that. He he does not count himself in this at all. He says that you were enriched in everything by him. Right? Uh, and this enriching is evident, especially in all utterance and all knowledge. Right? Uh, so utterance and knowledge, these two important things we see here are are refers to vocal and revelation of the gifts of the spirit right so we know right there are vocal gifts there are revelation uh, revelatory gifts of the spirit vocal gifts refer to tongues interpretation of tongues and prophecy right they're vocal you're speaking in tongues you interpret tongues and you prophesy a word right uh, and revelatory gifts or revelation gifts include Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Right? So you've got vocal gifts, you've got revelatory gifts. And Paul is saying, you as a church are enriched in all of this. Such a wonderful thing to know. Right? Uh, and we know the church in Corinth was a church that was already flowing into gifts. Paul is saying, you're enriched by this. Paul does not say, I taught you how to speak in tongues. I told you about the Holy Spirit because I told you you prayed and now God has given you these gifts. That's it. Right? A very important sign of a leader here. Whatever we do, give glory to God. God is just using us as an instrument. Right? As believers, we have been enriched in everything by Christ Jesus because of God's 
grace upon our lives. All these gifts, all the gifts of the Spirit, we can and we can grow in them. We can flow in these gifts because it is God who gives it to us. Right? Now, one of the most common questions people ask have asked me is, why is it that you know I can't? I'm not speaking in tongues. Or why is it that uh, you know I've been praying for five years. I've been a believer for ten years. Or I must speak tongues, or I don't have prophetic word. Now we must understand that His grace enriches us, so we are to, you know, uh, spend time with the Holy Spirit. And I always say this, right? If I want to know, for example, let's take somebody here who I don't know at all, right? I've never spoken to. Okay, maybe Harrison. Uh, Harrison, I've never spoken to Harrison. Right, who's here? Right, I don't know about his family. I don't know about what his uh, uh, his life or. But if I have to know him, I have to fellowship with him. I need to spend time and say, okay, Harrison, let let's meet, let's talk, let me understand. You understand what uh, who I am, and I can begin to understand who you are. And so when we fellowship, we get to know each other. Right. And so, if I need to know the person, the Holy Spirit, I need to fellowship with Him. And the more we fellowship with Him, by the grace of God, these expressions of the gifts of the Spirit begin to manifest. Now, it may manifest in small ways, it may manifest in big ways, but they will manifest because it's God who's giving it to us. Many times we have flowed in the gifts of the Spirit, but we have not known it. Right? Suddenly, God, the Holy Spirit will say, Don't do this. Don't take this step. Go this way. There's a word of wisdom that the Holy Spirit is giving us. Right? So it's a revelatory gift. It's not a vocal, it's revelatory. So sometimes we may have flown in those gifts, but we may not even have realized. We may have thought it's my own idea, but it's the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying here, His grace enriches us even in the expression of the gifts of the Spirit. It is His grace. Right? Every time we express the gifts of the Spirit, it is not because I prayed for one hour or because I read my Bible for two days and I asked God for the Holy Spirit to reveal to me. It's less of the I, it is the grace of God that God chose. To reveal it to us. The moment we come into that whole that position, you know, whether we prophesy, whether there's word of knowledge, there's working of miracles, everything will be God, it's because of your grace. Uh, it's sad when we look at the church around us right now, uh, and slowly things are uh, changing in even in our nation, nation of India. Uh, so much of pride, there's arrogance in, in, in ministry, you know. Oh, I'm a prophet, I'm an apostle. I, there's so much of, you know, we major on these minor things. Oh, I am, I have written this many songs. It's wonderful. These are wonderful works of God. God, you know, songs that have blessed the church, prophecies that have blessed people. Paul is trying to bring it here and say, okay, church, I know that you all are flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. It's all wonderful, but it is because of the grace of God that this expression of the gifts is being revealed. It is not your own doing. It is the grace of God. And, and so there's nothing to boast about. Paul himself says, I, I don't boast in anything. But did he have anything to boast about? He had everything to boast about. Pharisee of the Pharisee tribe of Benjamin. Uh, he could have said, I've started so many churches, don't tell me about ministry. I know I went on first missionary journey, two, three missionary journeys, started these churches. Uh, you better listen to me. You don't see that. The end of his letter, he says, Paul uh, to Timothy, he says, Timothy, you're my brother in Christ. He doesn't say, Timothy, you know, I found you when you were 17 years old. I hope now at least you'll do some good you know, right? It, it just, uh, he says, you're my brother. You see that 
you know, Paul is just saying it's by the grace of God that we are here together, working together as a team. No one's higher, no one's lower. Right? So that's a wonderful, wonderful position to be in, uh, especially for us as leaders. Right? Verse 6. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The word Greek word for testimony is martyrian, refers to evidence or the testimony of a witness. Right? Uh, so this is the same Greek word translated martyrs, which means witnesses. The testimony of Christ is confirmed in you. That means when the witness of Jesus Christ or the gospel of Jesus Christ must be brought to people in such a manner that there is a resulting evidence. Right? So imagine you become a believer, but people say, oh, hey, uh, I don't see any difference between you and the other person. You see, uh, imagine at workplace, right? We have the workplace. Everyone are gossiping, and if even I'm gossiping, then I'm not. I'm not seeing uh, as a third person. I'm not seeing the testimony of Christ in that person. Because Christ said, "It's against." I mean, we should not. We should not gossip. If everybody is lying and we are lying, I don't see the testimony of Christ. Right? But Paul here is saying. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, it has we have seen a result, and and not only me but people around have seen the result. Why probably before you were going to Apollos or uh, sorry Apollo or Aphrodite, you were going to those temples. Probably you were doing all those, you know, involved in sexual immorality, living a debauched life. But now people are asking. Hey, what are you doing? You're, you, you know, you're not speaking bad language. You're not, uh, you, know, you know, involved in prostitution. Uh, you're, you know, you're not drinking. You're not involving in all these other things. But you've been uh, so honest and you're speaking so, you know, uh, in integrity. And I see there's a change in you. What does that change? That is the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ in our life. So Paul is saying, the testimony of Christ is there in you. It is not only seen in you, it is established in you. Wonderful word. The message is firmly established in them. Right? So Paul is wonderfully exhorting the church here, right? He's exhorting the believers before getting into his uh, part two of the letter. He's trying to tell them, hey, this is what you are. We are seeing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We are seeing a change in your lifestyle. We are seeing the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. We are seeing lives being touched. This is what you are. You are a testimony in the place that you, that you live in. Verse 7. So that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when the gospel of Jesus Christ is brought in such manner, people's lives are enriched. Now, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church and he's saying, see, you, as believers, you're not lacking any gifts, any expressions of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You're not lacking it. Now, how does Paul recognize this? Now, remember, Paul has also started churches in Galatia. Before this, he started churches in Philippi in Thessalon Thessalonica. So he knows what's happening in each church. We don't see an account of, you know, prophecies, word of knowledge, expression of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the Galatian church. We don't see an account of it, right? But were there? Yes, they, they must have been, right? But it was, it was probably limited to a few, few times or few people. But here in the church of Corinth, everyone were flowing the gifts of the Spirit. And it was a common thing. It was so common that they didn't know that, you know, as a church, they're flowing in it. They were just prophesying, working of miracles, you know, 
especially nowadays when you go to uh, certain places and you know I was talking to a couple of pastors in North India uh, and North India is a place where you know a lot of uh, it's a difficult place to do ministry but people are so strong in their faith I was talking to a couple of pastors and they were saying uh, you know, uh, they were saying uh, there were some people who were, were paralyzed so we prayed and they stood up and they went home there were people who were blind they they came for the meeting and and they prayed and uh, she they began to see and god healed them the cancer also they were just healed and they're so natural about it right it, it is a common thing for them right but here in the south of india these are not common things you know, wow only this happened but uh, why is that probably it's the same thing for uh, the church in Corinth. for them prophecy word of knowledge it's, it's common now right so Paul is saying that the Corinthian church lacked no expression of the gifts of the spirit so they walked in it and when we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ if we do it the way Paul did it, brothers, with the demonstration of the work of the Spirit and the power, we will birth congregations that will walk in that same authority. Right? We will walk, we will birth congregations that will walk in the grace of God, the expressions of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the vocal gifts, revelation gifts, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But we must proclaim the gospel with two things. The way Paul did demonstrations of the Spirit and demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul did it everywhere. Right? Yes, go ahead, Sri Kumar. Uh, Pastor, I want to know the difference between the demonstration of the Spirit and demonstration of the power of the Spirit. Okay. Yeah. It's it's basically it's not, not a, there's no difference. It is the Holy Spirit. Right, he can minister to us personally, and there's a like what we said, right? The expression, the vocal uh, expression. So, demonstration of the Holy Spirit is to show that hey, it's not me, the Holy Spirit's work, right? I love this verse in Zechariah 4 6. It says, uh, It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. Some of the versions say, demonstration of the or the work of the holy spirit right it's not our own doing right and when the holy spirit does something he does it with power right there is no instance where the holy spirit did something and it was done weakly can we think of any situation right when the holy spirit has demonstrated himself and it was just something very weak So, she you want to answer the question? It's it's basically the same thing, right? Uh, it's just that we we demonstrate with the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit demonstrates, He demonstrates it with power. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, so that's what Paul did. What did Paul do? He went everywhere. He went. Remember Ephesus? He went there. He was preaching. He preached the gospel. He te he taught to people, and then he followed it up. Demonstration of the Holy Spirit. I said, Paul wonderfully set that example. He said, My preaching is not only in word, but it's also in action and in demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Because if we only talk and it's not followed up by action, what do what will people say? Uh, I, I, you know, there are a lot of times no? people say, Hey, this guy's only talk. I don't see, you know, he'll only say we can do this, but um, I've not seen him working towards it. Right? Uh, and I'm sure we have gone through those seasons. Hey, but Paul is saying, no, no, no. I'm not talking out of my own ability inside. It is the Holy Spirit bringing out you know, the demonstration, and or he's bringing out the work, and that work that he's bringing out is going to be powerful. Because it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, go ahead, Christopher. Yes, uh, Pastor, I just wanted to um, uh, understand. Uh, you know, you mentioned about this uh, 
you know, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I think all of us, um, uh, or rather each of us have maybe at, you know, at different levels of you know, yeah. fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I just wanted to, I guess, uh, ask you if you could share with us some of the, the, the some of the things that you did, you know, to, to get more fellowship with the Holy Spirit uh, in particular. And, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's, it's 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 some years of uh, you know that uh, you know that uh, that this happened, but maybe before you even you know felt that you know you had uh, received the or received and, be, and also being able to demonstrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what did you do and you know what did you personally do to you know to get get more fellowship? Sure, sure. I'll I'll just quickly share, Christ, Christopher. Yeah, that's a very important question. But uh, before I start, I just want to say that you know I'm I'm still pursuing more of God. There's so much more that I need to learn. There's so much more that uh, you know I, I pursue. But some of the things that help me, I can probably share. Uh, now, to answer your first part of the question, how I you know how what do I do to grow more intimate with God of course you know uh, there's this time of uh, set time of prayer and uh, reading of the word of God because the primary way that the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through the word of God right because we know that you know we've got our feelings we've got our emotions sometimes we may think whether it's me or whether it's the Holy Spirit so the primary way that the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through the word of God so uh, you know, spend a lot of time in the Word of God. Just ask God to minister, to speak. Uh, you know, ask questions to yourself. Uh, try to understand what we are reading. Uh, uh, you know, I remember after becoming a believer, I said, "Okay, I'm going to read." So I began to read the Bible, and I'm reading it. But it was more like you know, I have to finish it as a task. You know, okay, two chapters a day. Okay, let's do it. Uh, and you know, you just become a believer. You want to learn something. Uh, and it, it just became like a whole thing of, okay, two chapters a day, uh, a target that I had to finish, okay, half an hour of prayer. Uh, it, you know, it all became a target. Uh, now, it's good to have set times. Nothing wrong about, you know, having one hour of reading the word, one hour of praying. It's very good to, you know, it, you know that spiritual discipline is very important. Uh, but make that time fruitful is what I learned over the years. Right? So there'll be times when... Uh, you know, I, I I just try and talk to the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, uh, you minister to me. Like you know, just I'm going to read this. You share. You tell me what can I do, or how I can you know, uh, how can this help me in my life? Uh, now it's not like you know immediately I hear a voice of the Holy Spirit, and you know, it's not so, right? Uh, but even in the smallest of things, we know that God is interested in everything, right? Uh, so some of the examples are saying, uh, Holy Spirit, I don't know this chord. Uh, can you help me with this chord? Now, sometimes we limit the Holy Spirit only to holy things because he's Holy Spirit. No, right? no, no, he's He's there. He's there in us. We can ask him anything. There are many times I've asked him, you know, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, is this shirt okay? I've asked him now why am I doing that because uh, I, I just want to you know it's not like the Holy Spirit said open the book of John and you will find the answer there no uh, uh, but you just know okay hey uh, you know you're trying to build this you know it's like you're, if you're taking your wife or your children uh, to, uh, to shopping you'll obviously you'll ask them what do you think about this shirt so the same thing right? what do you think about this shirt so it, it may sound very silly, uh, uh, but you don't have to do that. But what I'm trying to say is uh, it's that small, you know, the small steps, uh, small things that, you know, especially you know, one of the things I praise God in ministry, we as leaders, we have to make decisions. Now those decisions will, you know, it can make an impact on the congregation, on people in the church and they say, God, Help me to make the right decisions, right? Help me not to be in a hurry. There's a problem. Sometimes, you know, I, I would always be in a hurry. Okay, let's get it done. It's good to get things done. I'd be in a hurry. So I would say, God, just, just lead me. Tell me how can I go about it. 
and maybe the Holy Spirit will just remind me of what to do or uh, give me an idea of uh, on how to bring uh, you know to get things done sometimes I may not receive that right so I continue to uh, just pray on that so uh, it's an ongoing you know ongoing so so many times you know uh, like you know uh, we may be praying for somebody uh, and we see an image it's okay maybe this is a problem that he's going through or the Holy Spirit may reveal it through uh, through a picture or a or a person or it could be even physical sensations and we read all of this in uh, the Holy Spirit class right he's able to minister through all of that uh, uh, and so we must make ourselves available like we've got uh, self sensitive now it's not that you know uh, it just happens overnight right and we know that so Christopher one of the things that you can do is just just involve him in every activity right? like for example i you know I'm taking this class here i was just checking the lightings before I could start i said holy spirit i hope this is good and uh, you know i hope this works out it uh, uh, you know i don't have to ask some things to the holy spirit right we can just figure it out uh, but what i'm doing is i'm just trying to get him involved in everything it could be cooking it could be uh, you know in my work it could be in my while riding the bike, or sometimes I even complain. I say, "Holy Spirit, these roads need to be repaired uh, because you know it's it's not good, uh, so dangerous, and it's not like the next day the roads will be repaired." Because I told the Holy Spirit, it's just that you're building that relationship. Right? There are many times I've been complaining to, about things to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit just given uh, an idea which I I never even thought of. For a, something that I prayed about three months or four months back, right? So you never know. He's he's wonderful. So you, uh, so that's one thing you can do. Involve him in everything that you do. I hope that helps, Christopher. Yeah, and so just specifically around uh, some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, mm. for example, uh, speaking in tongues or in mm. interpretation of tongues. Um, what I mean, what did what were some of the things you did to, you know, sort of um, yeah. get you know get get to that stage where you you know you had you you felt that you know you had you, you could demonstrate that gift. Mm. Yeah. So uh, initially, uh, when I began to speak in tongues, I felt it was like oh you know uh, I was like uh, is that me or is it the Holy Spirit? Uh, initially, right? Initially, when I became a believer, then I realized that hey, it's not me because you know I could. I could sense that it was somebody else inside me that was bringing it all out. You know, Paul says uh, the the Holy Spirit in, uh, moans and uh, you know he he brings out things in us. So, uh, in terms of speaking in tongues, like it doesn't happen to uh, I won't say it happens to everyone, but you know when I accepted the Lord, I got baptized. A couple of I think it was a couple of days later that I received the gift, and uh, it was hard for me to flow in it. Yeah, immediately uh, but then as I began to read and understand what it what it means to uh, you know, speak in tongues I really started you know uh, going deeper into it trying to spend more time in it so that's one thing and when it came to you know word of knowledge and prophecy I was very excited I right? said so God reading these passages as a new believer uh, you know that we all can flow in all these gifts and for me I, I love that whole aspect of you know hearing from God seeing from God and uh, uh, the whole prophetic I was uh, I, I love the way uh, you know Samuel prophesied brilliantly and, uh, just just every detail that he prophesies uh, so I love that whole thing so I, I, I used to keep uh, praying I said God you speak to me how, how, how can I hear the prophetic how can I understand so uh, so some of the things that I did was I read a lot of books right I, I kept myself updated like read reading books and uh, listening to a lot of sermons by the great prophetic uh, uh, preachers uh, uh, and, and then I began to try and you know in smaller settings and right? so especially in the prophetic what I would do is I would I remember in Bible college I would make my friends sit and I would say hey you sit let me pray for you and I would pray for them and say God you speak to me give me something about this person 
right so so i practiced it right now many people say we should not practice because god will uh, only give it when he decides you can't just practice it uh no you can practice it's like if we, if we can the more we practice preaching the better we become at it uh if i go to the stage and i don't practice what i've uh, prepared like practice in the sense verbally prepare and practice the preaching i'm not going to deliver the message very effectively so there's nothing wrong in practice there were times when especially in smaller settings you know uh people say i have headache we make them sit and i would pray you know, command this headache to get out in jesus name i would ask them are you feeling better they would say no uh sometimes i would be discouraged sometimes i would be like okay pray again uh and sometimes it didn't happen sometimes it happened and when it happened it's an amazing feeling right wow he was healed uh and so so during those times you know you just thank god and ask him for the grace now we must understand uh christopher that there are two things right there's there's a function and there's a gift right the function is uh everyone can function in this holy in the holy spirit right we have all the gifts like for example you can prophesy i can prophesy uh we hear from god we can prophesy or you can pray for sick i can pray for sick and they will be here that's what jesus said but the gifting is this special grace and anointing upon people's lives where everything they do is prophetic and you see these evangelists right uh, they 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 just pray over people and people are just healed uh doesn't matter what kind of sickness so so there's a function and right uh but we all can flow in these right so these are some things that i practically did christopher you know, uh, in smaller settings i tried my best you know in life groups and uh, whenever i meet my friends i would try to exercise those gifts and the more i exercised it i began to you know it helped me it helped me to grow in that uh and i'm continuing to do that right now one of the things that uh, we need to pray for is the word of wisdom right because now in ministry uh, there are so many things that uh uh ministries that i've taken up right now and i need wisdom i really you know sometimes i fear that i don't make the i should not be in a hurry and make the right the wrong choice so say pray god give me the wisdom so this is something that i'm you know praying about uh i i keep reading the bible how people make decisions how god uh let them to make those decisions and reading books uh on the wisdom of god and how we need to walk in this stuff so yeah so that's that's how uh i did it All right so i hope christopher that helps yeah. Uh, okay. yeah okay so let's continue from where we stopped yeah okay so some things that we can think about about verse 7 which was uh, so that you come short in no gift eagerly awaiting the revelation of our lord jesus christ we later see in the apostle in the epistle that the corinthian church had a lot of problems yet there was no lack of spiritual gifts now paul does not tell them not to express the spiritual gifts right he only guides them to use them in a proper way right so what do we see here wonderful right they are flowing in the gifts not in the right way but paul is not telling them hey you all all are you know there's division there's all these problems in the church you stop prophesying stop giving word of knowledge paul doesn't say that right and that's so wonderful he says see i'll guide you on how to go about it right there's a way to express these gifts it's wonderful that all of you all are flowing the gifts but there's a way he teaches them and he makes and his desire is to see them mature to grow to overcome their weakness now this is the heart of a shepherd right uh you know you see that he's trying to tell them it's wonderful you know flowing the gifts but use it properly use it in an orderly manner don't 
don't uh, uh, you know use it don't make don't abuse the gifts that god has given you maybe you you're unaware of it but this is the way you should do it and, and this is a very important lesson to us because while we while god is working through our challenges through our mess we do not stop manifestations of the holy spirit we do not stop praying in tongues now now christopher another thing that happened to me was in my initial days you know i would pray i say holy spirit you help me give me the word of knowledge and all these things and then somewhere along the line i would have sinned i may have got angry or may have you know shouted at somebody or uh, you know I, I i may have seen something wrong or said something wrong and all of a sudden i would feel that oh you know uh, I've done something wrong. God is not going to speak. Season I used to go through, you know, three, four days, I would, you know, pray, but very, you know, uh, okay, God, if you want to, can you please, uh, you know, minister to me? If Can you please talk to me whenever you can? Uh, yes, Shri Kumar. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, I just want to know, um, just for the clarification, uh, when we were discussing about the, the Corinth Church, the sin what they are involved in was not an ordinary sin. Like this. Yes. Yes. In Christ, actually, every every sin is forgiven okay. and understood. But uh, as you can, as we read, we can find that even the Paul uh, condemns certain certain things that even the sin what you had even in the unbelievers will not do. Mm. So mm. I just want to know that um, when they are practicing such kind of a thing, even in the lack of knowledge. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, can it be possible that, um, you know, the demonic spirit also get influenced to give them the prophetic gift or visions because of the, you know, especially in adultery thing and, uh, you know, and, uh, is it possible that in that area, uh, it can be uh, like, they can be, uh, you know, um, uh, corrupted with the things I just want to thank you. Right. Uh, so that's that's a very good question, Arshika. So let me answer it this way, right? Now, they, they were they were all flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, and we see that the church was being edified, right? Uh, spiritually, they were being edified. Like if you look at them as a church, like you know, uh, they were growing in the Word. They, all that was there, but they had practical problems, Shrikuma. They had the gifts of the spirit. They were flowing in these gifts, right? Because now see, they have come from a very different background, right? Uh, so you got, this is not only a Jewish church. Now see, the church in Jerusalem, I would say 80% of them were Jews. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, right? It could be. But they were a church that was, okay, everyone listened everywhere. But this is a cosmopolitan church. You got the Jews, you got Gentiles, you got Romans, you got people from different parts of um, Greece coming in, and this with the background of all this idols and all of it. They've come in. They they have a new heart. They are changed. Right? They are believers. Second Corinthians five seventeen has happened to them, meaning they've become a new creation. Inside they are changed, but the mindset and the thinking has not yet changed. That's why Paul writes, no, Romans 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So inwardly, oh, I love Jesus. I thank God that I'm not going to these temples and uh, God has changed me. But practically, there were some things that were not right. They didn't know how to you know, minister the gifts. They didn't know about order. Maybe they came in and then all of a sudden there was, you know, somebody having communion. They didn't know that when you come into the church, first there's an order. There is probably worship, or like how we do it, right? I'm just giving an example. Probably there's a word, you read the word, then you pray. Then after prayer, you hear a short message. And after that short message is the you know, uh, communion time. Practical thing. Probably they walked into church, went, took the communion, drank the Lord's table. Uh, then they went, discussed with people. Then they sang a few songs. Then they went back again, 
uh, you know, discuss something about the word. There was no order, right? So Sri Kumar, I wouldn't say that there was a, you know, a spiritual problem in the church. Like spiritually, they were infants, they were babies, right? They had many practical problems, right? So uh, I hope that helps answer your question, Sri Kumar. Yes, 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 right? yes, yes, yes. Right? Thank you, Pastor. Thank yeah. you. Thank it was more of the practical problems. Yeah, and that's true. And, 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 yeah, so it was not spiritually, they are still growing. That's why Paul says to them, no, I thank God for you. They are all become believers. They are, instead of going and sitting in uh, Aphrodite's temple and uh, 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 temple of Apollo, you'll have come to church. That's because of the grace of God. Good. I'm happy that you are children of God now. But as children of God, there are certain things that you have. So it was more of a practical problem. Oh, uh, that no spiritual problem, right? Thank you, thank you, Papa. Yes, yes. All right. So, yes, as we were saying, as God is working through us, there could be we may fail, there could be a mess, there may be challenges, but we do not stop the manifestation of. We continue, right? Sometimes you know this. The enemy comes and puts guilt into us, right? Say, hey, yesterday you sinned. Today you're going to church and you want to give word of knowledge, you want to give prophetic word. That's his view. Yeah. And immediately we feel, hey, no, no, I did something wrong. I, I don't think I'm eligible. Right? I'm eligible to do this, or I don't think the Holy Spirit will speak to me because of this sin. No. Right? It's not so. We repent of the sin, the Holy Spirit will speak to us. He will forgive our sins. Now, if we have unrepentant sin and we try to you know, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to what happens is we have grieved the Holy Spirit. So it's like we're building a wall. We say, no, Holy Spirit, I don't want this. Right? Uh, remember in our initial week, we did laying the axe. When if we are too proud to ask for forgiveness, that God opposes the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. So when we humble ourselves and say, God, I have sinned, I've fallen, please help me. And when we stand back again, he will definitely continue to manifest the work of the Spirit. I don't believe the lie of the enemy, right? Oh, he sinned, how can you do this? No, he is able to work in our lives, right? Uh, second lesson that we can learn, the expressions of the gifts of the Spirit are not to be equated with spiritual maturity. Amazing. I think, uh, Christopher, this really helps us uh, with the question that you have. These people, these believers, were five, six years, seven years. The church was seven years old. So probably you've got believers who are one year old in the church, or maybe six months old in the church. And they're all maybe you know, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe a person who's six months in the Lord is praying for the sick and they're getting healed. Right. So what does it mean? It means just because God gives us the Holy Spirit gives us the gifts of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that oh because I'm 10 years in the Lord that is why God has given me this right so I am mature that's why God has given me no right it's not so the people in the church in Corinth were immature they did not know yet the Holy Spirit released the gifts of the Spirit upon them. If we are waiting to become completely mature and only then we God give me five years or let me finish my Bible college course and only then I'll manifest the gifts of the Spirit, that's a wrong understanding. Begin now. Right? And as we begin to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, maturity will come. We will learn from our mistakes. And all of us, right, just because I'm teaching, doesn't mean I've not made mistakes. We all have made mistakes. All of us make mistakes in ministry, making decisions. Uh, but then we learn out of those mistakes. Hey, last time, with this, so help me, you know, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to do it the right way this time, right? So maturity comes that way. So, in terms of the gifts of the Spirit, never think, okay, God, I'm only six months in. I know the Lord Jesus only for six months, or I know only the New Testament. I don't know anything from the Old Testament. 
uh, or I haven't joined a master's course or a, you know whatever. Uh, all these are works coming to God by works. God can give it to us even if we are one day old, right? In Christ, He's willing to give it to us. Right? It's just our ability to receive and thank. We learn here that the Apostle Paul would not have only proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ, but he also taught these Corinthian believers about the gifts of the Spirit and the coming of the Lord. Right. Okay, so we've ended our time. So we'll stop here. We'll continue from verse 8. Let me just make a note. Okay. All right. So uh, we stopped at verse 8. Uh, we'll continue from next week next week we'll try to uh, go a little faster so that we can also finish uh, but we'll be open to discussing and having questions as well right all right so let's close uh, let's quickly pray and close father we want to thank you for this time and we thank you for all the learning lord we thank you for all the questions and Lord, we thank you that it is by your grace that we are here serving you. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to lead us, empower us, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to walk in your anointing, O oh God, uh, every day of our lives. We thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. Bless us, Lord, and use us for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless you.